Dr. Foote had spent 14 years of his life living in the shadow of his dead brother. But now there was no honor left to uphold and no quest to make. It was finished and the flow of life continued on. With his brother Ziba properly laid to rest, what would Dr. Foote do with the rest of his life? He had two degrees in a day when most men were lucky to get a few years in a country school. He was well respected, had a livelihood and money, but something was missing. Sometimes, men ponder their life and find their fate. And sometimes, fate finds them in the strangest of ways. Dr. Foote had been friends with Palestine resident and civil engineer Robert Carlton. Robert had laid out the town of Palestine, built a large grain and sawmill, engaged in farming, a card business, and sold goods all the way down to New Orleans via the river. As an educated and industrious man, much like Dr. Foote, they had something to talk about. And even more so, as Robert's wife Lavinia was expecting a baby and they needed a doctor. Her older sister, Cynthia Childs Barlow, visited from her home at Georgetown, Kentucky in order to help out after the baby was born. Dr. Foote and Cynthia were introduced. He was immediately taken by her charm and intellect. Cynthia had came from a prominent and educated family in Kentucky, and much like his brother Ziba and Sadie Hunt, they quickly developed a deep fondness for each other. Winthrop found himself thinking about her constantly and sent her poetry to describe his feelings. He wrote her, I cannot but hope that you may be the one not balmy sleep, the laborer faint with pain, nor bubbling fountain to the thirsty swain, not showers to lark, or sunshine to the bee, be nearly as pleasing as you seem to me. In the wake of all the darkness his soul had endured, Cynthia was like a bright light shining on a not-so-distant hill. She had given him a new reason to live. In the meantime, and with renewed energy, Dr. Foote worked to take care of Palestine. If there was a need, he simply took care of it, looking beyond to a day that people could not see. As a doctor, he took care of the sick, and as a prosecuting attorney, brought order to a frontier town. He was given an assigned annual salary in that role, to which he wrote next to the legal entry, rejected. After all his studies at Columbia University, the test and the bar exam, he worked for free. He believed that much in Lawrence County's future. Sometime between 1824 and 1826, he even took a boat to New Harmony, Indiana, where he spoke with Robert Owen about his utopian community. No doubt, trying to understand what would make Lawrence County truly great. In August of 1822, a large two-story courthouse was completed. It was so large that it doubled as the town's library. It likely looked similar 
to this one at Shoals, Indiana. Despite having two degrees and being the most educated man in Lawrence County, Dr. Foote plastered the entire building by himself. Certainly, that must have seemed very odd to the citizens of Palestine if working for free and swimming across the White River for his patients wasn't enough. Ready for the next phase of his life, he traveled to Georgetown, Kentucky and married Cynthia Childs Barlow at her family's home on May 22, 1823. She had just turned 25 the previous month and he was 35. The next month, in June of 1823, Winthrop resigned as Lawrence County's prosecuting attorney to focus on his new bride and medical practice, closing one chapter of his life and beginning another. And on August 16, 1824, Mr. and Mrs. Foote had their first child. They named him Ziba Hastings Foot, in honor of his older beloved brother. By 1825, the population of Palestine was about 600 people. The town even put in a bid to be Indiana's state capital, positioned beautifully above the White River. It would be the city on the hill. Dr. Foote could certainly be thanked for helping make the tiny village into a thriving city. In the story of Lawrence County, he was the right man at the right time. But fate was about to test what kind of man he was made of. A large, sinister thunderstorm of epic proportions fell upon the town. And within the storm, a savage tornado that tore a path of destruction across Lawrence County. It was like an evil omen, a warning of things to come. Soon after the storm, a mysterious sickness started affecting Palestine's citizens. One by one, day by day, people began experiencing chills and fevers and were confined to bed. People began dying in large numbers. Businesses closed and the once thriving city became a virtual ghost town. Many in the town said the sickness was a curse brought about when they cleared an ancient burial ground to place houses and businesses. For a fact, each time anyone went to dig a well, human bones were found. Dr. Foote visited the town sick but could not pinpoint the exact root cause of this strange illness nor could he treat it. So many people died so quickly that simple stones were used to mark graves instead of formal tombstones. Dr. Foote took to his horse and traveled swiftly to both Bloomington and Salem to consult the two other doctors that had traveled with him from the east in 1818. The three angels of mercy concluded Palestine's position near the slow moving river and frequently flooded lands was breeding the sickness. Dr. Foote met with the county's leadership to provide his opinion as a physician. Palestine would need to be evacuated 
for every last person would die. But where would everyone go? Dr. Foote explained that both Bloomington and Salem were away from the water in floodlands and slightly elevated above the prairie. A new town with these two factors would be an ideal location. Ground was donated by six men. It was a high up prairie four miles north of Palestine. Businessman Joseph Rollins suggested that the town be called Bedford after his boyhood home of Bedford County, Tennessee. The name stuck. But to make all of this happen would require an act of Indiana legislature. Dr. Foote used his medical opinion as a doctor and his legal knowledge as a lawyer to influence the legal move of Palestine to a healthier location. Identical lots would be traded without cost for the area that's now downtown Bedford, Indiana. The plan was approved February 9th, 1825. The log buildings were moved from Palestine, log by log, and the grand courthouse was sold to Moses Fell, who dismantled the entire building and took it away, brick by brick. Before long, almost no trace of Palestine was left. It was as if the town never even existed. The great city of Palestine, with big dreams of being the state capital, was completely gone in just seven years. While Dr. Foote could not save his brother, he saved hundreds of people from certain death and was the true hero of Palestine. A new beginning was just on the horizon.